Hey, hey, hey. I'm Michelle. And I'm Greta. We are girlfriends who have always been seekers. We love learning, sharing, and most of all, we love having those soul-to-soul moments with our girlfriends. Our podcast is about spiritual connection and sisterhood. You are not alone. So grab your glass, get comfy, and join us as we make some noise, light up the room, and get get into into it. Here we are today with Nicole LaFranchi. I am so excited to introduce you. Um, You and I have known each other for about four or five years now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, through a cheer gym is how we originally met. And recently at a cheer competition, I feel like this was nothing short of a divine intervention completely agree because those competitions are insane and you're constantly (laughs) running around and there was a moment where we had about an hour before our girls went on stage and in that hour you and I chose to stand right outside the doors with the boom 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 cheerleading music going on behind us and we got in to this super deep, soul-filled conversation. Yeah. I don't know how else to describe that. Magical. Magical. Yeah. I love that. You use that word a lot. Yeah. And I and it and I think it's a perfect word to describe what happened. So you shared some very personal things with me. And that actually opened up this whole dialogue around my podcast that I do with Greta or our podcast. And I so wanted you to be on this. And then you had mentioned that you had also spoke on another podcast. So I'm like, oh my gosh, and she's already doing this, you know? (laughs) So, so excited to have you here and get into this like just really inspirational story. But before we do that, because my girl Greta loves Italian, and that is one of your many gifts is that you speak Italian. I'd love for you to say a little something to our listeners. One of my favorite sayings, and I say it to my staff, I say it to my children, and I live by it, is a goccia, a goccia, se fare mare. And what that means is drip by drip, we make the ocean. It reminds me to pause It reminds me that God is. It reminds me to be peaceful. And I keep it in my home on a sign, (laughs) and I live by that. So it's my favorite. That is beautiful. I need that on a sign in my home. (laughs) I'll make you one. (laughs) It was beautiful the way you pronounced it as well. (laughs) Thank you. That's my dream. I I downloaded the app so far. That's as far as I've gotten (laughs) to learn Italian. You're close. really want (laughs) to. You're close. (laughs) <laughs> and I just love it. It's beautiful. It Thank is, you for yeah. sharing. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so I remember the day that Michelle, uh, we went on a walk sh- like the next Monday after you guys had that big cheer competition. And she was like, you have to meet Nicole. <laughs> she has to come on our podcast and um, started telling me a little bit about you. And wow, you have such a dynamic story that I don't think it's talked about enough. I think we'll start with you have so many things to share so many beautiful lessons. Oh my gosh, you should have heard before we even hit record today. (laughs) The beautiful lessons that were just coming from Nicole. I mean, we the first time I met you, I could have just sat in your house. I could have spent the night, brought my sleeping bag, <laughs> slept in the front room. Lumber party. We'll have to do that next time. Next time. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want the day to end. Yeah. Um, but if you would just share, we'll start with your birthing story. Okay. Um, I was 29 when I was pregnant with my son, Alessandro. And um, we were very excited. Uh, we were having a very healthy boy. Um, having been someone very spiritual, I felt very connected. I felt very in alignment with who the spirit was going to be and his dynamic path was going to be. And um, the day of his birth uh, turned out very different (laughs) than what I had imagined. So everything was going well. He was overdue. That's normal. First baby. And um, I remember they had to rushed me into an emergency cesarean uh, because I had lost all my my fluid. So it was touch and go. And I always get uh, skeptical about telling my story because I never want any other mother to ever be afraid, right? Um, And hopefully at the end, they'll be in joy when I share the ending (laughs) because there is a a wonderful ending. But um, so I, I was rushed in 
and they took him, they got him out within eight minutes, which was a blessing. And um, he had continued to desert. And when they took him, I remember they put him next to me and I was like, huh, his eyes look weird. <laughs> it's like, kind of looks weird. Um, but, you know, just having a cesarean, I thought maybe just things are going. And then yeah, they, you were a first time mom. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> no idea. And um, I, they put me into the recovery room and everybody was rushing around. And I remember it felt like like the world was standing still. And I remember a nurse saying, we're sending his placenta to Stanford. I was like, no idea what that means. And there is no husband. He's not in the room. And there is no um, mom. There's nobody. So I'm just sitting there. And it felt like hours and hours passed. So you were alone. Completely alone. Yeah. And no answers. No, no, I had no idea what was happening. And then about two hours later, at least that's what it felt like, um, I saw that there, uh, his dad come around the corner and he was sobbing. And I thought, oh, my God, he died. <gasps> you know? Wow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I thought, oh. And he said, and he fell on my stomach and he said that um, he has Down syndrome. He has a heart condition, most likely. And I don't want to be married to you. I don't want to do this. Oh, my God. And I sat in that moment. And I, if you want to believe there, there is a God, it was in that moment that I knew. Because there was almost like an angelic feeling that came from the top of my head down to my feet where I felt, um, I felt God. I felt like... And I remember the words I said to him, I would have 40 Down syndrome babies with you and it's all going to be okay. And then, <laughs> you know, the doctor comes in and, and everyone has s- stereotypes and things that they have to say. And, and you know, the, the first doctor told me he'll never drive a car. He'll, I mean, I'm in the recovery room. I haven't even left the recovery room yet. Right. So I'm still trying to even wrap my mind around this whole moment that you're having here, which is supposed to be. You just had a baby, you know, at this point in the hospital, I've had three births. So I'm thinking back to mine and I'm like, wow, this is where everyone comes in and they're so excited. And are you ready to laugh? You know, the baby's going to breastfeed and they're starting to push all of this kind of thing on you. But you're sitting here almost like having this out of body experience. Yeah. And having your husband tell you he's out. He's out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like pause there for a moment so everyone can just just really grasp what's going on Yeah, right there. And how long ago was this, Nicole? He's 16. He just right. turned 16. Uh-huh. That's exciting. Okay, yeah. so 16 years ago. Yeah. So even thinking back to that time, because we are we were advanced with some technology at that time. So I guess there's also, you know, questions in my mind, like, how did you not know? Did you not have any testing done? We had the testing done. And it came back that he wasn't down. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we so. didn't have the amnio because I was 29, so they didn't think mm. of it at that time. I just think it was divine. You know, mm-hmm. God had mm-hmm. a plan. <laughs> it yeah. is. So yeah. then yeah. you're in this room. Yeah. This is what's happening. And then. Yeah. And then. You know, Eric did come back. We, my ex-husband, he he came back. We ended up having another child later. <laughs> but it, what it turned into was shame. What it turned into was I have to make this right, right? My, I had enough spiritual teachings growing up that I knew that if I, the power of thought and the power of creation, if I could just fix him, if I could just make him better, if I could just make him normal, then my marriage will last. My life won't be hard. Um, My career won't be impacted. Um, And so I did that. I did that. For three years, I fought really hard. I hid him. Mm -hmm. As other, at the same time, I have to go back a little bit because at the same time, there was two other women pregnant at the office. So we had done all our baby showers together. We had done everything together. And so they would call me and their first words were, I'm sorry. You almost felt like you had to give the baby shower gifts back. Because you just, you gave birth to something that wasn't perfect. So that need to, to make it perfect was so intense for me. The A-type personality that I was, I think I call myself recovering A-type because (laughs) I, you know, because it was very like, you know, you, you want to make it right, but I didn't know who I was making it right for. 
Well, yeah, society. Yeah. And really wanting my marriage to work. Mm. Like I I had failed my husband. I had failed him. I gave him something that wasn't the NFL player. I didn't give him what he wanted to have and experience. And, and I didn't give myself that. And and then I was mad at God because God lied to me too. Then I was mad at him. I was mad at Alessandro too. Because I was like, you should have told me. We were connected. Like <laughs> You didn't tell me this is the way it was going to go. Um all those thoughts now, even though they're emotional thoughts, because they do make me sad um, or bring evoke sadness. At the same time, it feels such a long, so so long ago. Because after that, I surrendered. Well, and those thoughts and feelings that you're sharing right now are so raw and so vulnerable and so authentic that I actually thank you for speaking it the way that you described it, because I'm not going to lie, like as a mom, I had moments where, you know, I was taking tests and I'm just praying like, please let everything be healthy with this baby. That's the thought that I think a lot of women is your first go to. I just want this healthy child. And so um, to now, you know, have a baby even outside of Down syndrome, but you've got a heart defect that you might be dealing with. I mean, that is just big stress. And um, so for you, though, to also share the thoughts that go through your mind and not sugarcoating it, because I think as women, sometimes we want people to think that whatever we're dealt with is fine and we got it all together and, you know, everything's going to be OK when in that moment it's like, no, like I don't even know what to do right now. I am lost. I am ashamed. I am sad. I, a thousand different emotions, right? So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that your authentic um, description of your feelings is so appreciated. You're welcome. I think, and it's an embarrassing thing that we think about, especially I mean, the special need mom community is, is an, an incredible one. I'm so blessed to know so many. But when you stand in that, you you also feel this huge responsibility. Mm. You know, you're given all this information. You know, when your baby's born and they hand it to you, the normal thing isn't, they're going to die by 40. They'll never drive a car. It's going to be really hard, but they're going to be happy. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. How do you process that? Yeah. You know, when you're just even thinking, okay, I'm going to bring my baby home. I may not get sleep. You know, like those are yeah. the normal moms. What outfit do I have for them? Is the car seat installed correctly? You're leaving with like almost a life plan of, of the end. Like this is the beginning Dreaming. and the yeah. end. That's what you were, the message that you were given. So, yeah. so I love that you also described though, that the word you're using is that you surrendered. Oh. And so tell us about that, like going from hiding and shame and guilt and, and all these things you put on yourself. I'm not enough, you know, like all this stuff. How did you get to surrender? It's funny. It really is. The story I tell is funny because it was, um, he was three and he was in his room because a type personality has to hit everything, right? Because there's no way my kid is not going to be less, is going to be less than anybody else, right? And uh, he couldn't do head, shoulders, knees, and toes. The song that little kids learn, yeah. right? Head, head shoulders, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I'm sitting kneeled in front of him and I'm grabbing him and I'm screaming. And then I let go and I sobbed. I sat there on the floor and he was patting me on the head. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, you know what? My job isn't to teach you head, shoulders, knees and toes. My job is not to teach you to um, count. My job isn't any of these things because I, I wasn't equipped in the way that he needed to learn them. And I, I surrendered and soon after got a divorce. And I do collab, I do put those in connection with each yeah. other because I surrendered to that. I didn't need to make him perfect to have a perfect life. And it, it, the, the life has ebbed and flowed, of course. But I, I think that, that the surrender allowed for joy and it allowed for beautiful people to, to be part of our journey. I always say, and I really believe this about all children, but I, I do believe in particular that our, these special needs come with a lot of angels around them. And with that comes incredible beings that have stepped and been there. I can't, I mean, I have nieces and I have um, early interventionists and uh, friends and nannies. I can't even tell you the amount of love that has been in my home and continues to be in my home. Um, because of him. So. so that sounds like you had an awakening experience where you stopped trying to control ch or change yes. your husband and your son. Yeah. And you were able to, like you said, allow these other beautiful beings into your home and around you yeah. 
and ask for help. I think it's so important to ask for help. Yeah. And I think that is a a really good message for moms, right? Because I really see us trying to do everything. Oh, yeah. And I really realize, and especially with Sandro, is that I really realize that there, if there's a need, it's met. And I don't, I'm not meant to meet every single need that he has, right? Right. Like I got to make sure that there's a roof over their head and food in their bellies and things like this. But I can allow, I can let go and allow in sometimes in more incredible ways than I could even imagine for his own growth and development. And um, if I fast forward now, the message I would say to any mom, and I wish somebody would have said to me was, oh man, Nicole, how much fun is this going to be? I was so scared and it was all the hard that they told me. But damn, it's been so fun. Well, and let me just say, like, I met Sandro years ago and I didn't know he belonged to you when I first met him because (laughs) he just walked into the cheer gym like he knew exactly what was going on, who he wanted to interact with. And his spirit was so friendly and energetic, a little flirty. Of course. (laughs) He liked to flirt with the ladies. He likes the ladies, he does. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) My daughter really connected with him. She, of course, was just like, mom, you know, I want to introduce you. And his spirit has always been like that. And it's so interesting because when you were sharing about special needs kids and having all these angels, you know, just kind of around them. So when I go to any church, it doesn't matter what denomination, I feel like the Holy Spirit is right there and just pours into me and I cry and I have such a hard time holding back the tears. And I find when I am around, especially Down syndrome babies or kids, um, children of God, I get that same feeling. So my son, when he played baseball, used to go and do these challenger games. And you know, you know what I'm talking about? All these Down syndrome kids playing baseball and, you know, they'd have to walk them through the plates and I could barely stay there because I'm literally just like crying the entire time. And I think you just kind of gave me an explanation as to why there's these angels in this larger spirit that is present um, with that population of people. Yes, 100%. They're not weighed down by all these societal norms that the rest of us are. We put all these walls around us and we learn the right way to talk and be and do things and they're just still open and pure. I like to say the word authentic, mm-hmm. right? That I think that's the word that, if anything, Alessandro has taught me is is to be authentic, that joy, that way of being. I mean, there he wants to eat pizza. He's eating pizza. He's not like, oh man, I shouldn't eat those calories. <laughs> <Right>. like, <laughs> tastes good and I want some now. now. Yeah. And he, he says it now. Like, yeah, yeah, now that would be the right way to be. It, so I I have learned so much more about authenticity from him. So much more from, and I see it in, in autistic children and, and in children in general. But like when you take that veil away that like I have to show up in this certain way, mm-hmm. um, gosh, life is so much more fun. Like I look at him sometimes. I'm like, man, he's yeah. got the best journey. I mean, <laughs> Isn't that what we all are striving is to be more authentic, have more fun and be happy? Yes. And he's got it figured out. Absolutely. And we we worry about like, I got to get that next job and I got to make more money and I got to have this car and I got to live in this zip code and I got to make sure this and I got to. And he's like, man, I want to have that cupcake. (laughs) Like, oh, man. All I'm thinking about right now. In the moment. Well, and I, as you're describing all this too, I'm sitting here thinking like Greta and I actually have sons that are in that same age range 16 and 17 and I think about like the challenges that they have sometimes in school you know and in life right and trying to figure out who you are as a teenager and when I look at Sandro it's like he's just doing what he thinks is fun and what he desires yeah. like he's just living out his desires with no judgment around what it is that he wants in life. And he's no. present. <laughs> yeah, extremely. I think he's an uplifter. I mean, oh. I don't know how many women he's engaged to at the gym. I oh really, my God, that's I don't adorable. know. I don't know. <laughs> he's a little Rico Suave. He totally is. He's so cute. He's oh, great. I just love it. And so, so now he's teaching you so many things. And And you got to this place of surrender and acceptance and loving him for who he is and realizing that he is this divine masterpiece, you know, from God. And I think, you know, one thing when I think about somebody like you also in describing all this, I know that you've shared with me um, and also Greta that, you know, you also have 
this pretty extensive background in spirituality. And so it wasn't like all of a sudden you had an awakening in terms of your spiritual um, growth. You know, like it wasn't like one day you woke up at 30 and you're like, okay, now I'm, you know, opening like the lotus flower and I'm spiritual. No, like you were very young already having some pretty intense spiritual experiences. I did. Yeah. When I was really young, my father wanted to be a Catholic priest. So I grew up with this very traditional Catholic father. And then he married my mother and she was into metaphysics. So at night, my mother, it, a, a book you might not know, but it's a channel book called Ramtha. So Ramtha, I was eight years old when my mom started reading channeled books. Um, I believe I was probably around 10 or 11 when I started seeing where I could, see, I I saw, you know, relatives that passed and it was scary to me because you, you don't have any control at that, at that age. And so my father was very protective because I believe Italian Catholics believe this. I shouldn't speak for all of us, but I do believe that we're open um, and we do believe that there is another side. Like we were always getting signs and a relative was calling from the from heaven. There was always something that was always special that connected us. We stayed. I think we stayed connected to spirit. And death is such a part of life. Like so growing up that way, you know, first funerals and all of that was very oh we were we were we were never shied away from the cycle of life um and i i think that's a really big blessing um so early on though i think at eight i started questioning the catholic faith i started (laughs) you know not believing there was a hell my father was always you know bailing me out of ccd jail right like nicole you (laughs) she's sitting in the hallway again Um, (laughs) she's questioned she's questioned the regime i uh, I I just didn't understand it. I just thought God was all this love, and I didn't understand that God could do anything bad. And um, so, you know, but being so open and understanding and hearing and seeing um, and trying to process all that as a child, my father, you know, took me to psychics and started to really work on attuning my gift. And um, so, but it was also something that was um, something shameful, right? Um, even today, you know, I do finance for a living. You wouldn't want your finance boss to know, oh, I'm a reader too, right? Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have this other side to me. Um, and so, you know, there's always that, there's a hesitancy within me to share that part of me. And I think that that's what Alessandro's taught me is to powerfully choose to be authentically me. Um, and had I not had those gifts of connection, um, Down syndrome proves it to me. Like it, you know, I've read all the books and the how you talk to any other parent and you their experiences they have and how they it's connected them to spirit and you know how Downs have limited abilities in their bodies so they vibe they they call it stimming autistic kids that do it to it they stim because they can see things on a higher level and it talks about energy and you know I was like oh I was I was built for this. I was built for this. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so you know, God, our our journey, my journey with Alessandro has been, I think, bumpy because of perception. And I'd love to talk about perception later, but I, I definitely believe that I could have made this a lot easier on myself. But COVID was a really big challenge for me and my family. And um, you know, they that's a population that really didn't get a lot of attention, and you know, they don't learn in the same ways. Right. And here we are, and you know, I'd already surrendered that that's not my gift or talent. So. Right. And so, um, you know, my father passed unexpectedly and then our dog, he passed and then nanny left. It was like so much that Sandra had to process without the, without the words. And so he, he became violent um, to a point where we started looking at antipsychotics and most people don't associate that with Down syndrome. So my, you know, I have a scar on my neck from that experience. Wow. And, um, and what I was so grateful for to reflect back over this journey of my spirituality is I I leaned on Western medicine. I talked to the doctors, I got the meds, but I also worked with healers like my friend, Terry. I worked with my prayer groups. I, um, I continued to seek different ways to heal him and to help him. And, uh, I'm so proud of what has emerged. I feel so blessed to be his mom and I feel so excited for his future. And if you would have looked back two years ago, I thought I was going to institutionalize him. Wow. Yeah. And it's um, miraculous. And I remember my friend Terry, I hope that she comes on the show because she's absolutely brilliant. And she gave me the gift, the the tool of, you know, dear God, what do I do? And that's the surrender. The surrender was like, I know you gave him to me. <laughs> so 
I ha- I have to be open to whatever I need to do to help the situation. And in that, I ended up with two incredible uh, mannies <laughs> that love and support him. And These angels keep coming, angels keep, keep showing coming. up. And I, all you have to do is ask. Asking is given, right? Mm-hmm. Like it really is that simple. Um, but it's not just for special needs families. It's for everybody, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So it's, but it's so available. Good is always available. And I think that's where I feel so much in gratitude for my life. And we really do need a village. It yes. just keeps me going back to that. Um, it's yeah. so wonderful that you were given that tool to reach out and ask for help and that you had that village come around you. And you guys were able to work through that. I think the teenage years are challenging no matter what. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and COVID. I mean, none yeah. of us have ever experienced anything like that before. And we still are trying to figure out even how to come out of it. Yeah. yeah. Challenging times. Yeah. And I think that just to see him thriving out of it is the, probably the most ex- extraordinary thing. I think if I were to reflect, it's always about ourselves and our own journey. Really, it was never about him. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about who I became. Definitely. I love who you have become. And Greta and I (laughs) definitely um, experienced some really cool things at your house when we had our kind of initial just gathering um, to learn a little more about you and and talk about our our podcast goals. And um, I know that There were some things that were felt, (laughs) some (laughs) things that were experienced that we really also wanted to dive into a little bit because it was so profound and how Greta mentioned earlier, like we could have just stayed, you know, nobody wanted to leave that moment. The conversation was just so good and meaty and spiritual and everything I love, like the richest chocolate cake. (laughs) <laughs> I just couldn't get enough of it. I felt the same way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of all the things we were talking about, I did not expect to have kind of a supernatural experience in your house, <laughs> which I love that stuff. Like, yeah. give me more of that. Um, we were sitting and you had to get up and leave for a moment. And I told Michelle, I feel a presence behind me, like a man, but I don't know him, like a stranger. And it was giving me that little bit of uneasiness, like feeling of um, when you don't know somebody and they're behind you. Yeah, like, why are you right up on my back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out my zone. It's too close. It's in my bubble. <laughs> and then Michelle was kind of like, oh, well, yeah, like you were noticing that you, you know, you were kind of rubbing your nose and you were yeah. getting, getting something. Hits. Yeah. And then you came back and, and shared with us and it was, yeah. Really cool. Yeah. And, and, and it's a gift. Like, I, I think, you know, because of the shame, because of all of the things I've experienced, I used to do uh, readings all the time and, and bring people through. And I, you know, of course, don't charge people because I, I feel like I have a beautiful career and I, it's a gift that God gave me. And so if I if I can bring peace to somebody, I'm going to do it. But it really felt an honor to bring your brother through um, for you, Michelle, because I, I, you know, and I don't always feel so comfortable doing it as I as I used to feel. Um, so it, you guys allowed me to be my authentic self. So oh, I love that, grateful. and I love that. I feel like I got to kind of meet Michelle's brother, who I've heard so much about. Um, and yeah, he was a stranger to me because I'd never met him, be- you know, before the accident. Yeah. And it's like I feel a little closer to Michelle. Well, it was a really cool moment for me on so many levels, yeah. everything you both just described. But I was also um, leaving shortly after that to go actually see his daughter, who's now 15, and she was about five and a half when he passed. And so the fact that all of this was coming up right before I was leaving on this journey was really cool and special for me. So I appreciated that you um, shared your gift (laughs) with both of us. Um, definitely on a personal level for me. And then I know that Greta is always willing and open to kind of go in this direction um, in what we've been receiving in our lives, you know, and just being yeah. open to all of that. So anyway, I, I thank you for oh, your share. Yeah, and I think it's so important to be open because like the, I think the other side is always wanting to connect. And we're so fueled and funded. I love that that saying. We're fueled and funded by God, and and God is in all of those those beautiful beings that pass before us and then and that lay in front of us, right? So there's there's all these beautiful messages, and we're so when we're open, life is easier. We don't. I didn't see it that way before, but I see it now that when we're getting those messages, and it could be. 
I, I've had so many experiences where I'm sitting on an airplane with some amazing spirit and they're they're saying to me, oh, I feel this for you. I'm like, pay attention. <laughs> this is God. This is God. People. This mm-hmm. is God. God is always working through so many to bring us joy. I think it's a beautiful reflection of who you two are because that means that you want to feel it, experience it, and and be present with it. Oh, that's good. Couldn't receive it otherwise. That's that's my my philosophical belief. I've met lots of people who are closed to hearing from the other side, and mm-hmm. um, but I I've had to kind of battle that. I have had a lot of things happen to me throughout my life, but um, growing up Catholic, yeah. felt very fearful around it, and sort of kind of danced back and forth in between accepting it and opening up to it more yeah and and then completely shutting it uh, off yeah so. I too have I I, I I have been in places where I'm like I just don't want to have that in my experience I just want to be normal I just want to be like everybody else I don't want to everybody else oh, has the same and gifts so back to that <laughs> so growing yeah. up you said your dad really was pro- trying to protect you and Absolutely. basically told you that your gift was something to be ashamed of and you didn't realize that, but you were carrying that throughout your life. And yeah. it affected you in so many ways through relationships and all kinds of things. It was, yeah, something scary to say. Something that, you know, I remember like one boyfriend said, ooh, do you see things? Like it was it was so demeaning. <laughs> uh, well, back then, a lot of yeah. people too who, who shared things like this, I mean, you were deemed as crazy. You know what yes. I mean? So like a lot of people do look at it like that still sometimes where it's yes. like, oh, they, they're they what they're thinking of is woo woo and it's out there and they're crazy. And how come they're getting these messages? You know, what kind of brain, what, how is their brain functioning? And yeah. however, I do think that a lot more people are becoming a lot more open and us even having this conversation right now um, is very different than way back when we were all little. I mean, now people are paying big money to go see like mediums and huge auditoriums. Yeah, I know. It's you know, amazing. Yeah. It's become like glamorized a little bit, you know, yeah. but there's still, I think it's hard in, the, in religions when you really start having these conversations because of many different things. And, and I'm always a little bit, um, even talking about this right now, like I'm a little bit hesitant as to how I'm communicating what I want to get across because I don't want to ever minimize people's beliefs or make them feel like whatever their belief system, you know, is not a good one. You know what I mean? Like that's not where I stand at all. But I think for people like us who have actually had these experiences um, where, yes, maybe you've gotten downloads of information or you've seen spirit or there are things that have happened in your life that you're like, I cannot explain any of this. Like this is absolutely a supernatural yeah. situation. Um, you, you tend to open up the conversation a little more and want to hear from others so that you are not the only one. And that's always one of our big themes on the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're not you're alone, not, <laughs> right? <laughs> you are not <laughs> alone. So like we, we, inv- we have chosen to invite these kinds of conversations um, onto our podcast and in our circles of friends because there are actually a lot of people out there who have had these kinds of experience. And, and so, yes, there are some that have kind of shut it down and, and they're scared. The scariest thing for most people is just how powerful they are, mm-hmm. you know, and, and what, you know, we're always getting downloads. It's in that silence and the meditation and the prayer that we're getting the downloads from God of, of for our journey. And that's the piece of our journey. So it was like, it was something I was ashamed of and at some point scared of because you could see things and you're little and you're trying to figure out, why do I see my great grandma? And, and she's scary looking and, you know, yeah, and you're told, to, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, and you're trying to process all of that. And then now to think about, you know, every day I get up and meditate and I pray in the evenings with um, friends and I, you know, now just wanting and desiring that connection. Um, I used to think it made me, because, you know, religion Broken. will say evil, mm, right? Evil. I feel like I'm more godly because I do seek only love and in wanting to be a beneficial presence on this planet and wanting to be an uplifter. And so, you know, so there is nothing that comes from me that is wanting to dim someone else's light or tell someone they're bad or wrong or, you know, it's really to help right. them see how incredible they are. Right. 
if it comes from you, then it has to be good because <laughs> you're of God. And you know what? You just made me realize that there's this um, pattern here in your life where, you know, you had this beautiful baby boy that it's been such a blessing in your life and showed you showed so many people how to live and just be joyous and in the moment and present. Yeah. Yet you were told he was broken when they handed him to you. Yeah. And you grew up thinking you were broken. Yeah. And it's like he came, I believe children come to teach us. So many times we think, well, we're the parent and we know and we're like, we all need to take a step back. I know my kids have definitely come with a deeper knowledge than I have when it comes to just living this life. And they're kind of here to like grind against you a little bit and sand those edges down and help you grow if you just allow it to happen. And it looks like that's what Alessandro did for you. He did. I think in the surrender, I found my beauty. I think that I I know. I don't think I know. Um, And I... um, That's beautiful. Yeah. I found joy. I found... I kept seeking different and I still do how can how can I make life more fun more easy more easy easier <laughs> go get another degree in English Nicole no but <laughs> no but, you don't need any more no. Nicole this girl has like quite the educational or academic resume <laughs> But I felt like I feel now, you know, now it's just about taking it all and weaving it together. So I used to believe like I could just use my finance acumen and that would take me to success. And then I just leave the spiritual side and do that for fun and just help my friends. Right. So but I feel like what's happening in my journey as I as this morphs into something that I'm highly intentional about is is how do I become really an uplifter in the journey in helping women? I really want to help women especially moms with special needs and and single moms to to live abundant lives, abundant in joy, abundant financially, abundant in all ways, and that it's all possible. And I I hope that that's the legacy I leave when I leave the earth is is that. I don't know how it will all unfold um, because I am deeply entrenched in my career, <laughs> but I I really that's that's my goal is to share my message. You are, but I you are deeply entrenched in your in your work because you have to be. You're a single mother raising mm-hmm. children, so you know there are some things that take big priority. I mean, not <laughs> your spirituality can be with you in anything, right? Like you can take it with you where whatever into that work or at home or whatever. But what I love about what you're also doing, Nicole, is, you know, before we even started this podcast today, you prayed for us and with us. And, you know, that is such a big part of your life right now is bringing prayer, bringing meditation tools. You've talked about books, um, you know, using crystals. I know these things because you shared a lot of them with me. And so you've tapped into all these other resources that are available. And like you said, even along the way, it's like, yes, I've, I've, you know, moved into Western medicine and have had to take what I need from there. But then there's also this whole other side. So when I look at someone like you, who's and this like finance side and, you know, money and numbers and all this. And then it's like, whoa, but she also is intuiting all the time and praying and really nurturing this other side of the brain. So, you know, for you, it's like there's just such this huge balance, um, you know, in your life that I see when I look at you. And you are taking steps. You're taking big steps towards I mean, I, I don't know where you'll end up either, but I know it, it's going to be good and it's going to be big and it's going to yeah. help women. Like yeah. if that's your intention, I know that that's where you'll end up. Yeah. You're on your journey for sure. Yeah. And I think though, you know, when uh, one of my mentors told me, she was like, you're like a unicorn because you can take the spiritual side because the d- different ways our hemispheres think, right? You can take the finance side and the spiritual side and weave them together. It's kind of challenging if you're stronger in one area or the other. So I, I don't know how it's all going to unfold. I, I do study um, with a practitioner for a Magape. I love Agape um, International uh, Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. I do go there. I do study uh, the principles. Um, so I have um, a deep desire of my heart to to be of service in that way. Through the journey so far, I think the most important thing I've learned is is to seek happiness more so than seeking it to look a certain way. Yeah. Whatever path you need to take to get there, just allow it to flow. Yeah. I seek, I think that 
I've learned to seek joy and that um, I think I wouldn't be where I am at this age if I didn't have him. And even Gemma, they've taught me a lot, you know. They do. Seek joy. Okay, so that is an awesome message Mm. to, even when you're done listening to this, how can you find the joy in every moment of your day, even through the things that feel or seem like they're a challenge? Where can you bring in a little bit of that fun, a little bit of that happiness, like making those choices, right? Because every moment, it's choice by choice. Each moment comes with a new choice. Mm-hmm. A gocha, a gocha. The drip oh. by drip. Yeah. <laughs> you Say know? it again. A gocha, a gocha. <laughs> drip by drip. You feel it. And you know what? You can reinvent yourself moment to moment. Moment to moment. I can choose differently. I can choose differently. I can choose differently to see things. I can choose differently to feel things and experience things. And that's powerful. I love that. It's like we just circled back to we the did. first first bit of Italian that we've learned today (laughs) that just really sums up this entire conversation. Yes. I know that so many women will relate no matter what their circumstance is. You shared such a powerful message of just accepting yourself. Yeah. Thank you. And your children. Yes. (laughs) It's been a long road. (laughs) I've been grateful to be here. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If you liked what you heard and were your girls, please share and add a review on iTunes so we can continue to grow our circle. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok at That's My Girl Podcast.